everybody. Welcome back to the Bay State Golf Podcast. Just want to do a quick intro for today's episode and a few plugs. Um, as you know, I've got a, maybe you don't know, I've got an Instagram page where I post and write about all the golf courses that I've played in Massachusetts and also beyond. Uh, I'm currently trying to play, photograph, and review every course in the state of Massachusetts. I'm about a third of the way there. Um, and it's been a it's been a fun ride. Everything is on my Instagram. You can also go to baystategolf.com to see those reviews. Uh, a little more organized. Instagram can be a bit of a nightmare if you're looking for any sort of specific golf course review or you're wondering about a place and to see if I've played it. Today's episode, I have Nick Eliopoulos on. He is a person I've met through the game of golf um, on Instagram. He runs Give Me That Golf. Uh, it's a kind of a new account that he started over the summer last year, and he is uh, he has caddied at Myopia and Essex for the last I think thirteen years is what he said when uh, when we chatted, and he had some good stories to tell. We talked about caddying at Myo- Myopia and Essex. We talked about the golf courses. We talked um, a little bit about the qualifying um, challenges. Uh, in mass golf and in main golf events and and some of the 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 things that we have to deal with in order to try to qualify for an event um which is fun and hard and uh we encourage everyone to give it a try if your handicap is low enough to to do so and uh you'd be surprised at some of the events um how high some of those handicaps uh you can have uh, the publics being being one in Massachusetts so you can be a high single digit handicapper you don't have to be uh, a scratch to play in some of these qualifiers. And then we, as always with a guest, I challenged Nick to give me his five rounds of golf that he would play if he knew he was never to play golf in Massachusetts again. Um, he could kind of break them up however he wanted. It's not five golf courses. It's five rounds. Uh, so Nick gives us his five rounds he would play uh, and gives a little bit of insight into each of them. It's a good list. It's always a good list. Um, it's fun to listen to what different people say, uh, and what different people pick. So he picked his five. We chatted about that and, uh, and then we wrapped it up. So thanks for listening to this. Please subscribe. If you're uh, on Spotify, on Apple podcasts, wherever you like to listen to your podcast, if you're a podcast watcher, we, uh, also post these on YouTube so you can find us on YouTube. Bay state golf, uh, has its own channel. And I'm starting to post these podcasts there too. So you can go watch wherever you are. Thank you for listening. Thank you for subscribing. Write a review. Give us a rating, ranking, whatever you can do uh, to just help boost this podcast. Uh, This is the third week in a row. I posted a podcast on a Friday, which makes it a streak. Hopefully, we can keep the streak going. Um, So thanks for listening. Thanks for following. Thanks for subscribing. And without further ado, here is my conversation with Nick Eliopoulos. I have Nick Eliopoulos on the other line, my first 2024 guest. I've been uh, I've been solo for the last two weeks, so it's nice to have someone to uh, to talk to on the pod. So, Nick, thanks for joining. John, thank you so much for having me. Uh, any day I'm talking golf with a like minded individual. I remember you told me you know 30 or 40 minutes, but we'll shoot for 50. So I'm excited <laughs> to be here, man. Um, we got some great topics coming up, and uh, thank you so much for joining me. I, I wouldn't want it any other way. Yeah, this is going to be great. Um, to give people some context about, uh, we have never met. We spent about 10 minutes just before here um, just chatting and, and just chatting and figuring everything out. Um, so we met on, on Instagram, as I do with most of my friends these days, <laughs> and uh, you've got, you've got, kind of an interesting story just around the game of golf and some of the places you uh, get to play quite a bit. You've got a shirt on from one of them uh, oh, yeah. currently. <laughs> and if you if you are interested in seeing great pictures of Myopia and Essex, uh, go follow Nick. Give me that golf is, is your kind of golf focused um, account. But just kind of get, get us started. You said you caddy for you caddy there, caddy starting as a kid. So just how did you Get into golf, and, uh, and then we'll we'll talk about North Shore golf in Massachusetts, and and, and some golf courses, and whatever else we get into. 
I'd, I'd love to. Thank you so much for that warm um, intro there, Sean. It really is a pleasure to be on, on the podcast here tonight and, and to talk about something we both love. So just a little bit about myself. Uh, I'm Nick Eliopoulos. I grew up in Linfield, Massachusetts. I spent a lot of time in Linfield and Peabody and just growing up on the North Shore. Um, my dad got me into the game of golf. I didn't actually fall in love with golf until the age of about 13, um, which I actually think is pretty late compared to maybe not post COVID people or, or that era. But, uh, generally speaking, it was a little later, but, um, a little bit to dive into that, right. Is, is I grew up around the game of golf and, and one of the biggest things that derived me to have that aspiration for the game was growing up caddying, being around high networking ind individuals, being around the game, understanding how to, how to carry yourself. Um, all those little details that not only reflect from the game of golf, but at being a strong young man, being a good individual. So I started playing tournament golf only about a year and a half, uh, two years after the fact that I picked up the game, playing junior tournaments and uh, any PGA junior events and vice versa. Went on to play high school, had a really good uh, miles, some really good milestones at Linfield High School, and then ended up playing Division Three at uh, Westfield State. Had a very solid team. Uh, most of my team were people throughout the the um, the Massachusetts area, and qualified essentially for NCAA's uh, my senior year. So that's a little bit about myself. I still play competitively to this get uh, to this day. However, you know, used to be a good golfer, and now I'm an okay golfer. But uh, the love won't go away, and the networking won't go away, and it's allowed me to to be part of myself and to and just to get a better understanding of who I am. So that's a little bit about myself and I'm excited to dive in a little bit deeper. What, uh, what are your caddy red flags? Like you, you get to, you get to the caddy yard, you get your, you get your bib for the day, you get your two bags, you walk up to the first tee or the range or wherever you might meet your group. Uh, what are you scanning for as you're, <laughs> as you're looking around to figure out how long or short your day is going to be? You know, I think it's, it all starts right with, with just the weight of the golf bag, right? Um, if, <laughs> so at the golf courses, I grew up caddying. So Essex, Myopia, even Salem to some extent for a couple of years. Like those aren't areas where you can openly watch your players hit balls. Uh, maybe at Myopia, sure. not at Essex. Um, but nonetheless, let's let's count the clubs. Let's make sure there isn't 40 golf balls. There isn't, you know, Nana Nana's seven Nana's PB and J's when you're only going to need three or four. Um, just the little stuff, right? Um, as the days, I don't caddy as much as I used to when I was a little younger, but generally speaking, right, I would be to this day, I'm still pretty assertive with saying to golfers politely, you don't need this to walk this course. I'm going to end up carry, uh, carrying it anyway. <laughs> that and I think obviously just God, gosh forbid, you know, every once in a while, one of them still rolls up with the cargo shorts with the big bulgy side pockets and uh, nothing. No, that's not, not wrong. But, you know, uh, if there's a 90s starter pack, that definitely adds to it. You know? <laughs> um, and then I just to finish it off, I'd say like playing the correct tees, right? I think a lot mm. of these uh, players and generally speaking, you do get that older crowd at these older clubs um, or just country clubs in general, right? I think um, playing the right tees, making sure that if you can't reach the par fours and two, move it up a little bit. And and there's no shame in that. Give yourself a chance to score the golf ball. You know, golf is getting harder and harder as years go on for players. And there's really no need to make it uh, more difficult. So that's three just off the bat. I could probably think of a little bit more that will pop up into my head as time goes on. Uh, but nonetheless, those are definitely the the very quick tangibles going into that. What makes um, a good caddy partner, right? You're out there with a foursome. You've got another caddy. What, what, uh, what makes that other caddy um, a good caddy? What makes a good caddy partnership? Yeah, yeah, definitely a lot of things. And, and um, I've had the privilege to, to grow up with very, very good caddies, right? Um, just yeah. in my career that have grown into be more than just people I did part-time work with. I mean, these are lifelong friends for me, right? Um, we all know how golf works. So one of the biggest things, right, is, is obviously just the simple stuff. Um, I always say this, and this is actually very true if you really think about it, Sean. Like anybody could be a good caddy if they understand two things, where to stand and who is next to play. 
If you understand those two things, you could never caddy around in your life, strap up a double, and most likely nobody will question you, right? If you know those two things. So picking up on the social cues, um, you know, depending on the golf course, right? Like Essex is a little bit, is much more in front of you. Myopia has got absurd grass and, and can get very penal at times. So picking up on social cues, um, such as, for instance, having a foursome where two guys have a green in regulation. So maybe you hand their putters off a little quicker. They're going to be last to play. Getting up to that four caddy spot if needed, if the next hole requires it. And just the general team camaraderie, right? I think uh, just sharing the laughs. I think it's really funny, and I almost wish I did this when I was younger, but I was very close to starting a caddy yard podcast in the middle of the ruts, in the middle of this. Um, yeah. And it's a beautiful thing. I've I've met some people that when I caddy with them, picking up on social cues and, and being good partners, it just makes everything much more enjoyable. And if you're doing it right and you get good players that respect you, which 99.9% of the time um, happens if you just do your job, it, it doesn't it doesn't even feel like work. And it's one of the best part-time jobs that I've done for the past 13 years growing up in my career. What uh, Which course between Myopia and Essex is the harder to caddy on? If you had the same player, right? Like if you had kind of like baseline... Uh, you know, member or a guest, not some, just like they can keep it fairly straight. Uh, you're looking for a few golf balls, but for the most part, they're, they're in play. Like which golf course is, is the easier and the harder. Yeah. So no matter, no matter how you put it, how skilled or how unskilled the players are, um, Essex is by far an easier golf course to caddy at for numerous reasons. Um, one, because it's, it's, it's marked so much better. Right. Uh, mm. They have distances to the middle inside. Generally speaking, inside 250 yards, you're going to find sprinkler heads. <laughs> the greens are bigger at Essex, too, and they're uh, definitely more receptive. Um, whereas Myopia, you have a 150 yard stake. You have basically rangefinders that started coming into play maybe eight years ago. And that's about it, just to keep the old school rustic feel. Um, no sprinkler heads, and obviously the greens, uh, they're much smaller, and you, you do need to play to the front um, on a lot of those, depending on you know what type of day it is and what type of player you have. But um, just the sole fact that um, Essex is generally, in my opinion, a golf course that plays two to three shots e uh, easier than Myopia on any given day. Um, yeah. most definitely makes it an easier walk for not only a, from a player's perspective, but from a looper's perspective as well. Yeah. I hadn't thought about the sprinkler head piece. Just like you got to have landmarks at myopia bunkers and have a sense of how far certain things are from, from the green. Do you give uh do you give fake yardages? Is that a, is that a thing that you've tried? So, are you pretty honest with your players? <laughs> I'm pretty honest with my players, but sometimes, um, at myopia in particular, if you if I can't pick up the top of the flag, I'll just shoot the cup. So I wouldn't say they're they're fake yardages per se, um, but sometimes I'm going down to the fives, meaning like um, you know if it's 128 yards and and I really don't want my player to hit the ball over, and and most 99% of amateur golfers hit the ball short, I might say right. play 125. Um, so I'm never giving fake distances. But sometimes I do round off and um, even players will, will kind of pull me aside and say, hey, like I played here before. I haven't played here before. Like I just want looks. Um, be be defensive with me out here. Be offensive with me out here. Like I'll kind of let you decide like how you want me to play things. And um, that's generally how I approach it. I'll give I, I really only will give. Um, as much information as a golfer wants um, until they want me to elaborate more or talk more. So caddying at these two places, I caddied at the country club um, for a very short stint one summer after freshman year in college because I had time before my real job started and right. I got to play on Mondays. So what is, what is the caddy? Uh, how, can you play these two courses as a caddy on Mondays? Is it, looser than that is it tighter than that what's what are the privileges for for a caddy yeah i i'd say generally speaking so um both courses are are usually 
open to play outside of holidays um, or just outings per se. Um, myopia usually stretches past late morning or early afternoon, whereas Essex is, I think, 4 p.m., so it's a little bit more limited. Um, but you can definitely get out there. You can have your reunions. For, for me at this point in time, it's kind of a, it's a sentimental thing, right, as I'm, I'm already fully in my career in, in software sales. But um, nonetheless, like, just good vibes. I, I Even with my busy schedule, I try and shoot to play each course twice a year minimum mm. and then if i get more than that that's fantastic yeah you're making people jealous <laughs> I, I mean those, <laughs> those two places are like the white whales in the state for for uh for a lot of folks yeah as far as yeah. trying to find connections and and get on a lot of, they're probably the two most frequently asked about courses that i post about and and write about and people wonder about like how the heck did you get on there and i'm lucky enough mm. that i just happened to work up there and taught a bunch of kids who are members and so i made made friends and lucky enough to get invited every now and then so yeah um, so you taught so what was it so you taught um you uh you said you taught where where did you i was a school teacher yeah so i taught it i taught at short country day um in beverly okay okay gotcha yeah gotcha yep which is like pre-k through nine private school and um so i taught fourth grade there for for 13 years and that's so awesome. I met a lot of members taught a lot of members that's and, great uh, got some invites yeah so that's how i that's how i weaseled my way on <laughs> and then my upstairs neighbor in where i live now uh for a year he was he is a member at essex he doesn't live above me anymore but he took me out last fall to play essex i hadn't played essex in probably 15 years before before that so i hadn't seen all the all yep. the changes that have gone on it's it was crazy all the, the trees and the huge mound in the middle of the golf course that is all exposed with the rock and everything. What is yeah. your favorite? Do you have a favorite hole between the third of the 36 at the two courses or at least one yeah. at each course that you love? Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Like I'm, I'm always a sucker for par threes, So I'll say number nine at myopia right off the bat out of the 36. I think generally speaking, when, when you are a golfer and, and you make that turn off of eight and maybe you putted the ball off the green on number eight, <laughs> Um, maybe you hit it in two. It's a 473 yard par five, and you made a six. In in two, and you make <laughs> six because it's happened to me before. And um, you make all, you're walking off eight, and I'll have some st- myopia stories as we progress here. But you're walking off nine, and I just remember when I first saw number nine. I actually I was a freshman in high school at Linfield. I had my first golf match at Myopia, and I hadn't caddied there yet. Um, I, I've been caddying at Essex for about 13 or 14 years, myopia, maybe 11 or 12. So I didn't get to myopia until about two years in. Um, But just to see old school golf, I mean, it is so special. And and I think um, one thing that makes me pick that, right? And I love, I want to say first off, like I love both golf courses. They're very unique and they're They're amazing. They're both very different. They're very different. They're old school, but they are different. When you pull up to the, the ninth hole there and, and you see just the visual intimidation, right, of, of, a, of a green that's 35 yards deep, about nine paces wide, and just the staircases, I mean, there are days where I, every year, I, I caddy in the myopia four ball with the same guys for the past six years. I hooked up with them in early college, and essentially, they asked me to keep going, and we have a good time, you know. Um, they they take care of me. They let me kind of do whatever, and as long as I'm dialing dialing them in. And I, I just remember, <laughs> I just remember every year when I walk that golf course, and I walk that hole in particular with early September. The, the grass is up, the the greens are so glossy, uh, so glossy, and just rolling at twelve and a half, thirteen. And it's just you just look down and you go, this golf course is so special and unique i could yep. miss my shot two yards to the right and be playing literally baseball on my second shot hoping i could get <laughs> it on the green um yeah. you don't see that a lot anymore and i tell people this a lot um there's just this there's like a particular awe factor to golf courses and 
when I've gone there in the past and, and I'll, I don't know what you think about this because you've played a lot of golf courses in Massachusetts, but I've never quite gotten the awe factor that I have when I walk and play myopia than any other golf course in the state where you just look around, you listen to the horse that you're on the top of your backswing and you go, you hear Ooh, the horses are, <laughs> are grunting and the hounds are pounding. And I mean, it's just old school golf, same, same feel with Essex, right? You, you round out that corner, you get up to the first tee and you can see the vast landscape. I mean, number nine at myopia is my favorite hole. And then Essex, for par threes, I'm going to go with number seven because I love the short ones. I love that, that W shaped green, pushing balls left, pushing balls right. Um, and then if I had to say my favorite hole on the golf course would probably be, uh, the par four 12th, the blind tee okay. shot over the hill. Yeah. Um, I don't hit my dry, driver long enough where I need to hit a three wood or anything. So, um, you hit it to the neck and then you got basically a, a runway. Uh, second shot with usually when the course is playing a little f- firmer than than usual too especially in the fall you'll tend to get that bounce up and and it's just it's just such a darn good golf hole um there are so many on both courses but that one in particular that stretch 10 through 14 at essex is is some of the best five hole stretches you'll see in the state you might have some people say it's a it's a good four hole stretch with a bad hole <laughs> With a bad hole in the middle, because thirteen is is not a lot of people's favorites, and yep. uh, <laughs> that it just feels like a hole that, in some ways, is just connecting people from twelve. Twelve doesn't get enough love because ten and eleven are so good and kind of so picturesque with uh, with the, especially like the approach into ten and then the shot up to eleven. That that visual is is pretty stunning, and then. Um, with 12 being blind and kind of going back into the corner there, it, it's a really good hole that it definitely doesn't get enough, um, enough love. And yeah. it's, it's way better than 13. <laughs> definitely. And I, I think I feel your pain about 13. Um, I feel a little bit different about 13. I see, I always hit driver on 13, no matter if my driver is you good. Do. Or not. Okay. I do. Yep. I do for, for a couple different reasons. Um, I'm a good enough wedge player where if I hit one in the hazard, and I'm dropping, hitting three from, you know, 110 yards, 120 yards. I know I'm going to put that ball on the green, two putt, and get out of there. And I tell a lot of players that. And they, because what I see a lot on that hole, Sean, is a lot of players are laying back. And they want 160, 170 into that into that green. And it's just not a high percentage second shot. And, and truthfully, um, believe it or not, in my career playing that hole with driver, I've, I've made some birdies and, and I've also made some bogeys and doubles. Right. But generally speaking is, is I like when people stay aggressive on that hole. Um, you got to put a good swing on the ball to hit the fairway, but nonetheless, I think you're just as likely to make a bogey dropping out of the lateral, dropping out of the penalty area from 110, 120, than you are 175 to the middle uphill. Let's say you got some win. It's a weird analogy, but, um, Truthfully, that's kind of that's kind of my opinion. I always I always prefer when players hit driver on that hole, um, just because of the sole factor. I think it's 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 not too hard of a green to hit from 120 yards. It's a big green, right? And you got to get yeah, it up yeah. top. But 175 over the false front. I mean, you're asking for a lot. You need to be a ball striker, and the average 15 handy 10 15 handicap coming in with a hybrid. It's just not going to be high percentage shot for them. Yeah, that's uh, that's interesting. I I I can't remember what I hit. I hit a hybrid when I played it. The guy I was playing with just kind of told me that's what I should do, so I followed his advice. And then I watched when I was watching some of the Mass Am. Um, Ryan Downs, who won, he was like four up at this point in the final. He won. He actually he won the match on thirteen. He hit a like full a kind of a wipey long iron and he hit it right and he missed he was short of the he was short of the hazard on the right and Namek hit like a, a hook and ended up in the hazard on the left and tried to play it out and that was kind of like the end of it but right man driver that's a that's a, <laughs> that's a hell of a call hey i don't hate it i don't hate it you know but <laughs> keep in mind keep in mind and and I saw a funny stat and it's, it couldn't be more accurate, right? Like it said like 95% of golfers don't hit the ball as far as they do. And I will, I will tell you this very frank, right? Um, 
if I munch a driver, if I put the best swing on a golf ball I possibly can, and this is not a flex whatsoever is it's not long, I will carry a driver 260 if I absolutely put the best swing on right. it. So if, right. you're, if you're a mass and caliber golfer that hits the driver, three, that can carry the driver 290, yeah, you probably shouldn't be hitting driver. Yeah, that's a good point. You get it, yeah. and, and think about it, right? Like a lot of those players are longer where on that hole, they're coming in from 150 to the middle. That's going to be an eight iron nine or less. Iron, eight or nine, yeah. Right? yeah. So a couple things to think about, right? But for me, I, I don't carry a, I don't carry a wood. I carry my two iron. I carry my driver. It's just, that's my ah, personal. Okay. Okay. So for me, it, it's just driver. You know, I, I, I like the driver on that hole. I like to stay aggressive on that hole. I, I also, the second shot is a really cool shot. Just like visually, it's just the, it's just for, I think for most people, it's just that tee shot. Cause if you're in the fairway, that second shot is kind of a thrilling, beautiful golf shot with the mound in the background. And it's kind of the green sitting, uh, sitting where it does, but those are Definitely. two, I mean, that's, that's a good hole. Um, so you, you know, you, you play a little bit still, and you said you are an okay golfer after being a good golfer. <laughs> and you and I kind of, you and I kind of run in the same qualifier world, um, a little bit. And you, you said you wanted to talk about qualifiers and, and what, what that kind of world is like. Um, I find it challenging. I find it fun. I wish there were more of them to play in, uh, over the course of the summer. I think you have a mass, you have a main, uh, handicap as well. So you can play in some main stuff. Is that right? Yeah. So sorry, as I, I plug in my computer here. Um, oh, no, you're uh, fine. Yeah, I won't go too into detail with like the actual systems. Um, but nonetheless, like having a, a piece of property up there with my family and having a gin, um, they can make things work, right? So yeah, um, yeah, it's not an issue for me. So I, I play a little bit in Massachusetts and I play a little bit in Maine, and I just try and stay competitive, right? And there's nothing like the qualifier settings. Um, they remind they remind me of college. They remind me of just um, what it means to play the game of golf correctly, right? Um, and not to say that people are playing it incorrectly, but I tell you what, and and you can take a quote from from Nick Eliopoulos's book here. I don't care who you are. If you're a plus four, if you're a four, I'm a four handicap right now going into 2024. Um, I'll shoot my 85s. I'll shoot my 80. I shot an 87 in a, quali a qualifier last year, and I will own it. Right. Um, <laughs> yeah. I don't care who you are. Right. Um, tournament golf is just different. It is a different yeah. breed. I, quite frankly, Sean, I don't care about that seventy four you had at the Muni with your friends on on, sure. a, on a twelve twelve Bud Light deep Saturday afternoon. That doesn't mean where uh, yeah where the where yeah. the gimmies get longer as the round goes. Correct in the pace of play yeah. and the, and the focus. It's it's the focus, right? Um, it's just it's a beautiful thing because it's so humbling and it reminds me, right? Like twenty twenty three, um, I went out for five or six golf tournaments and and um three three or four out of those, I missed the cut by two to four shots. It's there, right. right? But it's a matter of just yep. not making that bad swing, just not making mistakes, not making double bogeys. Double bogeys will absolutely kill you. So for me, it's it's something I need to work on. I think I'm going to be able to play a little bit more golf than I did uh, in 2023, hopefully in 2024. Uh, but nonetheless, it's just different. It's so different. Yeah. And I respect the heck out of all these players that are are qualifying for mass ams that aren't division one golfers that are just like everyday people which obviously <laughs> it's a small percentage right but it, it's especially in the state of massachusetts the level of competition in the state is insane and yeah think of of asking me to go shoot one or two over par at a championship golf course from 70 uh from 6700 yards 6800 yards um, up a, up against people who are going to go on to play, you know, mini tours and play division one golf. I mean, it's a tough ask. So I kind of know my limits. Um, <laughs> the mass am for me is kind of just like, Hey, I'm just going to go play golf that day. And it's early in the season. So it's like, all right, let's get a, 
let's get a round of golf under our, our belt. Let's compete. Let's try not to make, make mistakes and we'll see where the dice rolls. But um, yeah, it is. I love tournament golf and I, I'm trying to get, you know, my buddies to, to go out for the pub links that are, you know, nine handicaps, 10 yeah. handicaps, um, because it's just, yep. it's just good for them. You, you take that experience and the next thing you know, and you're, I don't do this often, but when you're throwing down NASA money, um, with your buddies, uh, things become a little easier for you. So it's, it's, it's an awesome, it's an, it's such an awesome thing. Yeah. I always, I try to think about, um, how, how long, how deep can I get into the round where my shots still matter? <laughs> Right. You know right. what I mean? Totally. <laughs> that, I totally that's like, totally can, I, that. can I get to, am I on like, did it, were the juices still flowing on like 16, 17, 18? If they were, and I didn't make it, like, I, that's a that's a good run. And I've, I've learned some stuff that I can, maybe there was something that happened in the first 15 holes that kind of made it harder for those last three holes to, to uh, you know, I need a birdie or something. But with the, if the juices are flowing that late in the round, um, like my mass am performance, their juices were gone pretty early. <laughs> the yeah. tank was yeah. empty. Um, <laughs> But yeah, that's that for me is like the mine was no, I I I nipped you by three, (laughs) (laughs) nipped you by three. Uh, Yeah, I was at Andover. What a quirky golf course. Um, Still haven't played there. I'm surprised I've never been over there. Yeah, right. As a as a guy from that area. Yeah, and yeah, so that's that's always my kind of first like how just how deep into the round can I get where where my shots still matter, Um, and then getting to the point where maybe they don't and figuring out like, okay, what can I continue to do and learn in these last like seven holes or on this back nine? Because I just made double bogey on the ninth hole and I doubled the 10th and I'm kind of like, I'm kind of out of it. What can I find in these last eight holes to, to make this next two hours meaningful for the next time I qualify? So I still get to learn something because they are, yeah, they are definitely um, the crucible. They're so much different than just teeing it up with your buddies on a on a Wednesday afternoon um, yeah. and going to try to play. So I would encourage. You're right. I, I've done the same thing with friends as far as pub link stuff because your handicap can be, you know, you can be kind of a high single digit handicap to get into those, mm-hmm. and they're fun. They're the the difference and the energy between the mass am qualifier to the mid am qualifier to the Publinks qualifier are like so palpable. Right. It's very interesting. Um, like that, Matt, when you're at the Mass Am, because you get the D1 kids, you get the, uh, I was, Molly Smith was at my qualifier. Oh, really? Right, and she made yeah. it through. Yeah. Um, but you get like some, you get some players um, who, and then the mid AM, you kind of get, you get some shots that are a little bit, a little bit wilder and, you know, guys are on your fairway. <laughs> Yeah, uh, there yeah. might be some people share, borrowing your hole for a little bit, um, yeah. and then the Publinks is kind of a ne- the next level up. Not to say, I mean, the golf is a little bit worse, but the scores you still have to shoot a really good score to get in because the guys at the top of all of those fields are mm-hmm. are still really good. Um, yeah, so go if you have the time and you have the energy, even if it makes you a little bit nervous, it should make you nervous. Go and go and qualify somewhere. Just try. It's it is a great experience. Have you looked at the Mass Am? qualifier list yet for for courses this year i actually didn't know if it was out yet what do they have yeah they've got um off the top of my head right now you can, i mean it's on mass golf uh Wiano is one okay hyannis is one uh franklin park which i'm sure will be popular oh, no um was one um those are the three off the top of my head i was looking at it the other day but yeah they're starting to roll out the the sites so i mean signups are like five weeks away so Yep. Yep. Middle, um, middle of, uh, I think beginning of March or something like that. Yeah. Yeah. yeah it's it's your funny alarm. to say that too. Cause like when you, when you qualify too, and, and most of the time pretty much except for maybe one tournament, I had played at least one of those golf courses for qualifiers before going out for them. But then, uh, for instance, I see like Ipswich Country Club on there for like some sort of qualifier, and I'm like, I want nothing to do with that place. Not I <laughs> that, love the, I love the golf course, but do I think I'm going low there? Absolutely not. Nope, I'm going to break somebody's same. window before I before I make a birdie there. Um, so it's just a reality <laughs> check, and and um, I think that's it's just course part fit. Of, you got to find the course fit, right? It's part of knowing gotta... what type of golfer you are. You know, I I I, I like a golf yeah. course where you can hit driver. Um, you know, preferably I think a little shorter might play it to my advantage, but I don't, 
I don't want some quirky, you know, front nine at Trollbrook type vibe where you got to hit weird little irons and, and like a Gannon. I love Gannon too, but once again, um, quirky golf course. Um, I actually, I, I love Gannon. It's one of my favorite public tracks on, uh, and, uh, North Shore, Massachusetts too. But yep. nonetheless, if I can dodge that golf course for a qualifier, just for what my game suits, I'm going to try. <laughs> yep. Yep. I, that's where I played my Publix qualifier or my mass mid amp qualifier this year. Yeah. Um, yeah. yeah. And like that place is weird. Cause you can, the ball can just disappear mm-hmm. on you on a couple holes. Yeah. You can hit it. You can hit a T ball and it just tumbles off somewhere into the trees or the grass. And like, you're hunting for a golf ball. And suddenly you're like, I guess I'm happened to a guy in my group. Like we're looking for, like he hit it down the middle the the ranger saw it, but mm-hmm. again, it is a good, is a good spot. It's great. Um, uh, I was going to ask you something else about qualifiers, but it it, uh, it left my mind. So we'll we'll press on. I I want to I I try to ask all my guests as a little bit of homework before they come on, um, yeah. and a good way to kind of like round out the podcast or just talk for another twenty minutes because there it's it's good fodder. Five rounds in the state of Massachusetts. Um, I used to call this like your final five rounds, and I realized it was a little bit morbid, so I've tried to couch it with like. Imagine you're leaving the state. You're moving to California. You know you're not going to get to play golf in Massachusetts. Um, uh, yeah, right. It's tough. It's tough. You're going to California though. It's all right. You're going to be fine. Yeah, nothing. And, to golf, you know that. And, and you get I, well, especially for you. So this is this is going to be an interesting list. I'm I'm looking forward to hearing it. Um, so you get five rounds. It doesn't have to be five different courses. You can spread them out. You can play a place twice, um, which gives you then four courses to play instead of five. Um, so I'm going to, I'm just going to hand it over to you and ask you, uh, first, did you do your homework? And secondly, what are your five courses? Yeah, (laughs) I I definitely did my, my homework. So I'll give you some insight, um, before I even give you the the answer. So there, there, there will be five different golf courses for my answer. Okay. One across the board, uh, just for camaraderie reasons, for experience reasons for, oh, I remember that day when I was there, I did this or that day I did this, um, a little bit to dive into my preferences for golf is um, I I would rank essentially I would (laughs) rank the three different generally types of golf that you have in these three orders. Uh, My favorite type of golf in general is woodland golf. I prefer golf courses that are, I grew up playing in Maine at Point Sebago um, and still do to this day. So nonetheless, that deep new England feel where the birds are loud, where you can't see each tee box from each other. It's special to me. And I think um, I'm actually anti-tree removal, which is a very minority opinion. Um, and I think <laughs> golf courses have been yep. definitely devalued with, with tree removal uh, in particular, just from my opinion, which is rare. Um, the second one would be, I do like Lynx golf, but there's really not a lot of true Lynx golf in Massachusetts when you actually think about it. And then the right. third would be Parkland. We have a lot of rich parkland donald ross golf courses in massachusetts and that's essentially what i think of like trademark massachusetts golf and there's a lot of them and i have come to look at it right now i don't have a ross course as my five rounds in to remain in massachusetts but but when i give you the list you'll know why and then i could on the outskirts, <laughs> that six through ten seed would be all Ross, essentially. Um, so I'm gonna go with yeah, yeah, yeah. The, the first off. I, I I need, and these are actually my five top golf courses in Massachusetts for my preference. And this is gonna be a unique list, and you're I'm okay. sure you're gonna have some rebuking from me, but I'm gonna go with uh, Myopia I love is it. my number one golf course in the in, in Massachusetts. Um, because not only the golf course, okay. but the, the environment, right? That place is, is, is very unique in its own sense. And that off factor is like nothing I've ever seen at, at a club. Um, the second is going to be Boston Golf Club in Hingham. I think, I think Hans came in there uh, and did just an absolute Correct me if I'm wrong. It's Hans, right? It's not core. That's not core Crenshaw. That's Hans. He did a yeah. renovation there. Yes. Okay. No, that's a Hans. Um, yeah. Old sandwich Hans. is uh, core Crenshaw. That's what I thought. That's why I was looking at. Um, I just wanted to confirm here, and it was about to sound like an idiot, but um, yep. that that place is is rich New England topography. I mean, you enter it 
and it's just golf, right? So a lot of places will have amenities where they're focused on the social aspect, they're focused on the bar scene, they're focused on the tennis, they'll fo- focus on the pool. And we both know like that, that club has pound for pound some of the best golfers uh, per capacity in the whole membership in a, you know, in a Massachusetts club. So I've played uh, Boston golf club just twice in my life. And that's actually an inner rule um, to qualify for this list. I have to play uh, to qualify for a favorite golf I course. I play the golf course at least twice. That is a rule that I made up for myself. Okay. So um, <laughs> yeah, Boston that's, golf club, that's a good rule. Yeah. Boston golf club. So special. I'd have to take a round there. And then I'm actually going to go uh, public with my number three option. And um, I need a, I need good. an October we day. like that here. Yeah, I need an October day at Crump and Fox. I need an October day at Crump and Fox. Okay. Um, have you played Crump and Fox? I played it before I started this whole thing. It's actually the course that um, kind of gave me the idea to try to play every course. Yeah. I left teaching in the summer of 2019. So that fall before COVID hit, I was like had some time because I, I was working, but I wasn't, I wasn't teaching. So I had flexibility of like, I could leave my house. Um, and I took a day trip out there and played. And that was one of those days. Where I was like, I, man, this is, I mean, it's a long drive, but you can kind of get to everywhere in the state in a day. Yep. Um, so I have played it once. I loved it. I thought it was very cool. I played it in like a sept- late September. Mm-hmm. Um, one of the first courses in my, in my phone that has, uh, that has pictures. So kind of the, one of the places that, generated this whole idea but i can't wait to go back and play it properly when did you play it last Good pick. in 2019 i played it one time and it was in 2019 2019 yeah, yeah so like the fall of 2019 yeah, yeah and, and, and i'll obviously give some incentive are there for, any trees left uh, at that point are there any trees so, left there i'm kidding right now they they did cut some down but it, it doesn't really it's not to the point where it takes away from the aesthetic to the golf course uh, that stuff I don't mind. Like if if courses are going to take yeah. out trees to to take out dead trees and and make kind of the the edges a little bit more punchable if you hit a wayward shot, I get that. Um, but like if we're talking hundreds and hundreds, uh, depends on the yeah. look. But Crump and Fox to me is um it's a special golf course, right? Like I met one of my one of my really good friends uh, used to be an assistant pro there, and and I won't you know I won't mention names here, but um I just remember. Growing up, part of that reason that Crumpet Fox makes this list is it's it's beside the fact that it's a championship golf course, it's going to take your lunch money if you don't hit the ball properly. That is a ball striker's golf course. And when I went to college in, in Western Mass at Westfield State, I just grew this appreciation for the experience of Western Mass, right? Um, outside of golf, I do a lot of fishing and I do a lot of hunting, right? So for me to say I don't enjoy that drive, I try and play Crump once a year with realistically almost the same foursome every year. Uh, to take that two hour drive upwards on the north side of the state there to go through these little towns. Um, it's the golf course, but it's also the experience, as you know, as a golfer. And uh, Crumpet Fox is a public golf course that has yeah. private aesthetics. They have the T markers with the logo, they have the trash barrels with the logo. They got really, they got a really good aesthetic and budget to that place. And the golf course, I've played that place when it's firm and fast, greens are rolling at 12. and pound for pound shot for shot that is one of the hardest golf courses in the state and the elevation changes and it's just a true trent golf course it's it's difficult and you gotta hit fairways and you can't miss and you gotta you have to know when to be offensive and when to be defensive but i just absolutely love that golf course everything about it and it's it's just such a great place to spend a day in October in New England. That is that is New England golf at its finest. So yeah. number what, like oh. I, if I remember correctly the clubhouse and pro shop are, are kind of like log cabin. You you feel like you're kind of deep in the woods when you're at Crump and Fox from you're absolutely from my memory in the woods and and Which, when uh, you before you get yeah. to the golf course you cross over the Connecticut River and you know morning tea times you're often greeted with that mountain mountain fog. It's 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 such a beautiful thing. It's such a beautiful thing. Great place to play golf. If anybody, if anybody hasn't played Crump and Fox, go check it out. Play the proper tees. 
or it's going to be, could be a long round. You could be backing people up <laughs> respectfully. <laughs> number four, number uh, four, number four is going to be TPC Boston. And I know we were on Instagram and, and you gave your spiel about, you know, TPC doesn't quite have that all <laughs> factor. Um, I think TPC is, is awesome, right? And, and once again, being a Woodland Golf fan and somebody who prefers Woodland Golf and nature and not seeing every single tee box from each other, um, I thought TPC Boston, I, I played TPC Boston three times. And every time I've been there, that long cart ride to the first tee and you don't know if you need to hit driver and it's just, you got deer running all over the property and cut back in the woods it's silent you have the xfinity center uh concerts playing while while you're on the course i mean it is it is a really really good course and i totally understand how that was when they used to play the dell technologies how that was one of the easiest tour venues for pros winning scores were upwards of you know 25 under par 20 25 under par i get that because you can you can miss it off the tee a little bit. The greens are big enough. Um, but for me, it's just, once again, it comes back to the variety. I thought TPC had great variety, actually. Um, obviously, a couple of holes were monotonous, but you look at holes like uh, the par 5 second, the par 4 fourth, the drivable par 4 fourth, with that Redan green, deep yeah. bunker on, on uh, covers covered by a deep bunker. You got a bailout on the right. Um, it, it's just... Number nine, tough dog leg, big green, kind of a punch bowl on one side, if I remember correctly. Um, and then 16, the par three over the water. And I think, obviously, the icing on the cake for that decision is the fact that it is a it is a PGA course and has been a PGA course. And I believe they're bringing an LPA, LPGA back to TPC Boston in 2024. Um, but I just love the aesthetic of that yes, place. Sir. Tournament players course, Boston. The experience for me was fantastic. The hospitality was fantastic. So that's going to be my number four um, going in. I love the end. I love the finishing stretch at TPC Boston. I think it's really strong. I think 15, 16, 17, and 18 are are four good holes to, to kind of finish the day. All very different. Um, 17 is sneaky good. I, like sneaky That good. hole, I loved watching it. During during Deutsche Bank and Dell Technologies, that that's the hole I would go sit on the corner and watch guys hit shots into there. Right, um, and it'll be a good spot to watch the women as well. And then 18 is a, a really cool hole with a wild green. Yeah, and so, it's, it's yeah, silver, number five. It's a Silva design, I believe, too. Yeah, that great stretch. Um, number five would actually be at Great Horse. I'm gonna pick number five at Great Horse for that um, for a couple different reasons. Club atmosphere. I played Great Horse a, a numerous amount of times. I'm, I'm hoping actually I can get back there. It's it's been years for me, and um, quite frank, it could be a long time. Hopefully not, but uh, we'll see. And, and God bless. But the reason I pick Great Horse here is is for a couple different reasons. Once again, is right the environment there. You're driving up on the hill. Um, it's got the best practice facility of any golf course I've ever been to. Right with whatever, six to eight, uh, pitching and chipping greens and then beautiful driving range. And yeah. just <laughs> the overall aesthetic to that golf course. When I think of, can a golf course actually get any better conditioned? It really can't. <laughs> well, at least when I played great horse years ago, all three times I went, um, just the high fescue and the bunkering and, and that's another Silva course. And it's just special. And I know um, when you cross the road, it can get a little bit monotonous, but from a visual, from just rolling a downhill pot on that, on that golf course and, and hitting those tee shots and, and visually seeing that golf course and playing that golf course, um, I'd have to play that golf course knowing I would never play it again. Um, those would be my top five. So just to yep. sum that up, I would need around at, and these are actually uh, essentially mainly my top five list of courses I enjoy in Massachusetts is I would need a round at Myopia. Yeah. I would need a round at BGC Boston Golf Club. I would need a round at Crump and Fox in the fall. I would need one at TPC Boston. 
and I would need one at Great Horse. That would essentially line up my my top five rounds left to play in Massachusetts. Never knowing you're getting, uh, knowing you're never going to play them again. Those would be my five. No Essex. How, how you left Essex off there? I know it's a Ross, right? So, <laughs> so, so you, you kind of warned us. <laughs> so here's here's the thing: like six through ten, three or four of those golf courses are all Ross. And, yeah. and sometimes if I had to do, I didn't do any deeper thinking on this, but truthfully, probably all of them are Ross, right? Um, you have Essex, you have Salem. I love Weston Golf Club in Weston too. Super, super cute golf course. Um, Fresh Pond in Cambridge. Um, I know it's not in Massachusetts, but um, a Ross course, Biddeford Saco in Southern Maine. I mean, these are all like such good Ross courses, right? Yeah, Winchester. I'm forgetting about Winchester, right? Hey. Um, they're, they're all so good, right? And when I think about them, it's just it's so tough to to have that bubble, right? And and you put me yeah. in that, and you put me in a tough situation because you said give me five <laughs> courses where you need to play, knowing you're never going to play golf in Massachusetts. That's it. I'm going yep. to the woods, man. I I mean, I'm I'm going to go to the woods. <laughs> I'm going to tend to go to the golf courses that I love that are woodland, right? That's um, what you're supposed to do, yeah. Woodland over it's your, it's your list, man. That's my list, right? Because um, <laughs> I grew up playing golf at, at a woodland golf course, and I just I love that. Um, but yeah, es- Essex in particular is so it's such a special special place, and I- I'll never forget this quote. Like when I played high school golf, one of my friends um, that I played high school golf with. It was a foggy, dreary, bleak, gloomy day at Essex. I was a freshman in high school. First, first. Um, first high school golf match ever. Like I'm just shaking in my boots and I'm like, you know, I'm like, ah, I know this course like the back of my hand, but I'm a freshman, right? Like I, I'm just nervous. It's my first time. And he, we walk up to the place and he goes, wow, are we at Hogwarts? And I kind of just laugh because the place does give off the the Hogwarts vibe when it gets dreary, when it gets gloomy with the castle clubhouse, old school vibe. Um, He threw some Harry Potter in there. Um, You know, I think like, (laughs) It's it's they're so special in their own way, and you have to look at all these courses in a particular way. Um, if I am talking, what course do I want to play on a regular basis? Right, it, I would shift more toward that. If it's a golf course yeah. where I know I'm only playing one one time, and for the rest of my life, I would have to shift toward you know what I just love uh, in in rich golf. It, it's it's such a tough battle, and and there's so many, so much, there's so many Ross courses in Massachusetts, in my opinion, that don't get as much praise as they deserve. Um, and then there are some that maybe deserve a little less, some that deserve more, uh, because we have 40 or 45 Ross courses and in Massachusetts and probably 30 plus of them are private. Um, it, right. it's just, it's, it can get really tough because we're so rich with Ross Parkland golf here in Massachusetts. What high school played their matches at Essex? So did Hamilton and Wenham have their was so, it their yeah, home course or like some matches were at es- Essex if they had the golf course on a Monday or whatever? Yeah, so th- it's funny because this was the whole debate versus like uh, like the NEC uh, and the Cape Ann League, which were basically the surrounding North Shore um, academic competitive conferences. So Manchester Essex would play at at Essex and Hamilton Wenham would play at at um, Myopia for their home courses. Okay. What uh how do you how do you so you said you fish and you hunt how do you how do you keep like golf uh how do you keep sane as a golfer in the winter? We are it's January right now. It's unbelievably cold out. We were saying before we hopped on like a walk around the block is hard. Um Yeah. <laughs> So what do you, what do you, how do you, do you, do you have indoor spots you go to? Do you just put the clubs away? Uh, what do you, what do you do? I definitely don't put the clubs away. Like I'll, I'll hesitate to whatever golf courses are open and, and I've seen more golf courses open this winter. Um, so there are, yeah. there are options around. Um, and, and for me, it's, it's, I'm a big hyper fixations guy. So I'll have golf, uh, 365 if mother nature allows. And then, I'll have hunting from October through February. I'll have fishing from basically the time it's ice out, which 
fortunately I'm, I'm hoping that this, this winter essentially stays, stays calm how it's been. Um, and then full swing golf season and, and fishing season from the three seasons. So I, I keep busy. Golf is my number one. Like I, I prefer golf over any of my other passions in life. It's just, it's part of me. I'll, I'll try and play on any day possible. I'll play in 40 degrees. I'll play in 35 degrees. Um, I got my clothes for it. I got my beanie for it. I got my, um, a couple friends that like to play in the cold with me, only a couple quote unquote, but, um, <laughs> it's doable. It's doable. I don't, I don't think yeah. a lot of people are cut out for it. Um, because they just mentally, they don't think it's, it's, you know, it's not golf season. I'm not going to play. Um, if you, if you want to, if you want to play, you, you know, you'll find a way. Yeah. There's a, there's a bunch. It's a, I've got to plug my website here as we, as we finish up, but like the, the list that I've accrued just through people on Instagram, giving me the name of golf courses, there's a ton and they're in places that like North of the city, you can go play. Yep. Nor, uh, you know, you live north of the city. That's. I think most people think I got to go to the Cape or I got to go to the South Shore, but you can. There's some spot. Cape Ann is open. They are yep. open for business. Um, yeah. What do you hunt, and what do you hunt with? Birds. 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 Uh, I, to to be honest, I I don't even want to go into this too deep because it's only my second <laughs> year, and I, I'm not. Oh, cool. I'm like a I'm like a 15 handicap hunter. <laughs> So That's fine. It's, it's it, I'm just getting into it. Um, I'm cool. learning more and more, but it's it's really uh, it's a really fun activity. The way I look at it, Sean, right? It's a really fun activity for me when it's a little too uncomfortable for golf and maybe a little raw for golf. So November, December, you know, when there's no snow on the ground, so you're not snowboarding. Um, it's a good fill-in. It's a really good fill-in, and and I love it. I've grown to really like it. Um, didn't think I would years ago, but I realized, you know, what I, what I like to do, having respect for the sport. I, it all starts with having a couple friends who are very big into it, who are educated, who are, who really know what's going on and, uh, just one experience to take you out and, and go forward. So it's, it's, a it's a great one of many things I, I love to do to, to pass time and, and stay busy. Yeah. Build a little patience, just something different to do. Absolutely. Um, that's awesome. Absolutely. Yeah. You and Brian Harmon. Yeah. <laughs> you and Brian Harmon. And, uh, uh, oh my gosh, I'm blanking on it. Sam Burns, I believe is, uh, he, I don't know if he's big on hunting, but he's big on, uh, he's big on the whole Southern American scene, you know, <laughs> just being, being red, white, yeah, and blue. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 Um, well, this was great. Effect. Thanks for, uh, it's funny. Oh, sorry. Go ahead. I was going to say there was that video on, on four play where they were, they were in, uh, just the Hills of, I don't know, maybe the Carolinas. I don't know. And they were just, they were going shooting and they were freaking out and they were just like, oh, Sam Burns, he, he's an American. Like this, this guy's more than just golf. And they were all just like, oh my God, I'm freaking out. Like this, this thing's <laughs> super loud and obnoxious. And the, the video, if you haven't seen the video, it's quite funny. It's quite yeah. funny. Yeah. Um, well, this is great. Thanks for, uh, thanks for joining and giving us an hour of your time. Uh, some good nuggets and people, you know, five golf courses. So appreciate you doing your homework and, uh, enjoy the winter and maybe we'll try to get on the golf course and meet in person at some point, uh, this spring in a, in a heavily wooded golf course <laughs> for sure. Hey, Hey, honestly, any golf course is good, you know, <laughs> just, just for the walk and, uh, yeah, final statements for me. I really, really appreciate this. You know, I think uh, a lot of my friends who who might listen to this episode are totally gonna. This is gonna be not new news to them. They're gonna understand where I'm coming from. They're they're gonna know me and and vice versa. But I want to thank you for uh, having me on today. I really like the page. I really like the content. I'm looking forward to listening to this myself and. Anytime, man. I, I love talking about golf. I love talking about the experiences and how grateful and how impactful the game has been for me um, over the past years. And and give me a shout if any of you are listening. The portfolio is going to get a little better as time goes on. I know I don't post every day, but give me a shout. It's hard. It's hard in the winter, man. Golf. If you don't have stuff in the backlog, you're just yeah. kind of waiting yeah. around for, for the warm weather to come. Absolutely. Um, yeah. So. so I will, I'll put a link to, uh, your Instagram in the show notes. People can go check out, uh, Nick's page and get sure. some good 
myopia and essex shots especially on there so uh, thanks again nick thank you sean take care and have a nice night